Okay, we're back. Now, I do all of that conversation a moment ago about that tweet that came out of the SBC and the way that they said it, you know, uh, are we, in, they, the way they said it was, are we in friendly relations with this group or are we not? And so I look at the SBC and I recognize they're having to do their own fellowship discussion. Now, you might say, well, Caleb, they're not even Christians. I know that they're SBC, but I'm saying they're having a problem that my brethren over at the Memphis School of Preaching are having. They're having a fellowship problem. And that's where I come in. We've already had a phone call where our sister uh, asked for what a fellowship, 1992 Collierville Lectures, and we have been advertising these books. You can get them on PDF from me. I will email it to you, A Comprehensive Study of Unity by Curtis Cates, A Crucial Study of a Critical Subject, Fellowship by Global Music. But what I want to do before I get into Memphis, why does any of this matter? Now let me say this too. Somebody says in the YouTube comments, they said, Caleb, I wish that you and your dad, you say, another one, Memphis, I wish y'all get off of this. We all got a new event going every month, so I'm saying I could do this year round. It's, and you say, well, you know, I'm sure God's pleased that we have an event every month. You're never doing evangelism. It's always us new, us few, and nobody new. You're always talking to the same people. This is where I plug in the quote from Jimmy Lovell. Jimmy Lovell said, every person deserves to hear the gospel once more than any person deserves to hear it twice. These folk have heard it 5,000 times and they are not promoting evangelism in the schools. Over there on the, the logo, SOP, School of Politics. That is what the machine and the system does now. But I have some people who are asking, you say, well, why does any of this matter? What are we doing? And people are asking, what, who is Pepperdine? This is Pepperdine, okay? Pepperdine is, but here's one more. Patrick Mead is a regular, can you see this? Regular Pepperdine speaker. 2014, Patrick Mead, okay? Patrick Mead is a Pepperdine speaker. Let's listen to this from Patrick Mead. Day in the life of this church. For uh, a long time, we've talked about the way we value women here and the way we believe Scripture values women. And it wasn't that long ago that Lipscomb called and said, we've got somebody that wants to be a preaching major but needs to have an internship. And I said, send her. So Lauren, come on up. This is our preaching intern who's about to... <laughs> yes. Look at that. Look at that. I grew up at Royal Hill Church of Christ in, in like Antioch, Nashville address. And then my dad is now the preacher at Donaldson Church of Christ. And so I went to Lipscomb, not as a Bible major, as a communications major. And the Lord made it very clear that he wanted me to do youth ministry. So I started majoring in Bible with an emphasis in youth ministry and did, I've done three youth internships. The Lord also made it clear, um, through a lot of discernment, and through a lot of prayer that I was supposed to pick up a preaching emphasis along with my youth ministry emphasis and the people at Lipscomb have been so supportive of that. Where is the Memphis School of Preaching? Where is East Tennessee School of Preaching? Where is Brown Trail? Where is Southwest? Where is the Texas School of Preaching? Where is Bar Valley? The, the Freed Hardeman Lectures in February just had three Pepperdine speakers on the program. Now, here's Patrick Mead, and she is from, this is Lauren King, she was a student, all that business about the Lord directed me and the Lord gave me discernment that I needed to get a preaching degree. This is a special, is a special day in the life of this church. For uh, a long time, we've talked about the way we value women here and the way we believe scripture values women. And it wasn't that long ago that Lipscomb called and said, we've got somebody that wants to be a preaching major but needs to have an internship. And I said, send her. So Lipscomb facilitates women preachers. Pepperdine speaker Patrick Mead accepts the women preachers. Over at Pepperdine, they accept women preachers. Here's one more layer to Pepperdine speaker Patrick Mead. Look at this. Worship 2020 by Patrick Mead. Worship 
Patrick Mead, what type of worship are they having? Bass, guitar, piano. This is instrumental music in their worship. Now, the, this is y'all's biggest thing. My brethren lose their head over women preachers and the piano. So when you're asking me what's wrong with Pepperdine, any given Sunday you came in and they had a woman preacher, and you, well, no, I'm not going for this. Then why is Pepperdine getting to come into Freed Hardeman? This is not rocket science. It is totally inconsistent for my brethren to look out at Saddleback and say, yeah, they should have been kicked out of the SBC for having a woman preacher. You do that to your neighbors, you are mega inconsistent. And young men, they see these inconsistencies, and when they raise up and they say something, the schools swat them down. The schools see that it is bad political atmosphere to go about correcting things that need correcting because they're going to have a family member who has a family member who's friends with Phil Sanders, and they send money to the Memphis School of Preaching. They are not in the correcting business anymore. Roy Hearn is gone. Curtis Cates is gone. And someone might say at the end, Curtis Cates was questionable. B.J. Clark is not in the standing in the gap business. This is the school of politics. Now, did you see who is Pepperdine? Pepperdine, Patrick Mead, instrumental music. <laughs> Patrick Mead introduces Lauren King from Lipscomb as a woman preacher. Now, what I'm doing tonight is super simple. You know, for folk who say, get off of the fellowship conversation, you all got to hear someone call in and ask for a book, you know, and I had someone else text me the other day asking for this book, 1992 Collierville Lectures, What a Fellowship. You know, since, just saying, since we, uh, we started these fellowship talks, <laughs> our views have gone up by 9,000. The, the word is getting around on the fellowship, and the word is getting around. And here's a new quote from, we're going to call him TBD, because uh, that name is long and hard for me to say all at once. TBD, Director of the Texas School of Preaching. He sends out a message to, this one is my dad, when he says, Brother Robertson. He says, Brother Robertson, I agree with your position on Freed Hardeman. Everything you state concerning them deserves a hearty amen. And he closes out by saying, all the best, brother. Hey, man, all these folks will say, well, you know, I've just found that it doesn't do any good when you go out and just start naming names and calling it out that way. You say, I don't see that it does any good. We're making headway with TBD. Brother Robertson, I agree with your position on Freed Hardeman. Everything you state concerning them deserves a hearty amen, all the best. What have we said about Freed Hardeman, though? Let's go over here. Freed Hardeman, we've had a call for repentance from Steve Higginbotham and FHU, Steve Higginbotham. We've had a call for repentance, David Shannon, B.J. Clark, Freed Hardeman. We have had a call for repentance, Freed Hardeman, and Phil Sanders and B.J. Clark, let me get out of the way of that one. And Terrence Brownlow Dendy says, what you have said about Freed Hardeman deserves a hearty amen. So Terrence Brownlow Dendy, the director of the Texas School of Preaching, is saying out to Phil Sanders and B.J. Clark, David Shannon and B.J. Clark, Steve Higginbotham, you all need to repent. June 7th through 11th, BCS, they've got their workshop coming up. Uh, what do they call it? The 7th Annual Men's Development Conference. If there is no repentance taking place, and I'm saying, y'all, all this stuff is out in the open. All of your, as Dad played the clip from Stafford North, all of your cooperating congregations in the lectureship is public out in the open, and the repentance needs to be out in the open. Is B.J. Clark going to get to come to the 7th Annual Men's Development Conference if there's no repentance taking place? He was supposed to have the 10.30 slot on Sunday morning. B.J. Clark, director of the Memphis School of Preaching, and Terrence Brownlow Dendy says, 
We need some repentance. I agree with your position on Freed Hardeman. Everything you state concerning them deserves a hearty amen. All the best, brother. Now, that is a very big deal. Can I have a moment? And someone says, Caleb, it's not a big deal when any man does any one thing. You know, I said earlier in the broadcast, these people say, Caleb Robertson ain't no hero. And I said, amen. I, you know, I say Luke 18, about verse number 13, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's my category. I'm a child of God who needs the Lord's grace. But I'm a participant in the conversation, and I'm in this shared pursuit of Bible study with you all. And I appreciate it when someone comes out and says something that needs to be said. I agree with your position on Freed Hardeman. Everything you state concerning them deserves a hearty amen. All the best, brother. Terrence Brownlow Dendy, director of the Texas School of Preaching. Now, let me switch over to B.J. Clark, though. This, y'all, when you look at their lectureship lineup, there is something unspokenly being communicated. You're not going to know who a handful of these people are. But as you go through and you look at them, I can just say this. This is the regular crowd for Memphis. Billy Bland, he's on staff. Dan Cates, on staff. B.J. Clark, the director. John D. Berry, he's going to be there. Victor Eskew, I think that Victor is a graduate. Eddie Gilpin, these are regulars. Gary Hampton, I don't know if he's a regular. Uh, I know who he is, I just don't know if he's a Memphis regular. Brian Kenyon, he's from the Florida School of Preaching. Bobby Liddell, he's on staff. Evan Manning, that's the youth minister. Ryan Manning is obviously his brother. Mike McDaniel, he would sub sometimes while we were there. Keith Mosier, mm, no, I know some of these other people, I wouldn't call them regulars. Kevin Rutherford, he's on staff. His father teaches over at East Tennessee. Paul Sane, he's a regular from Memphis. Robert Taylor is still in there. I would not call Steve Weiss a regular. Tom Waycaster was on staff. Alan Webster's on staff. It's a pretty in-house event, right? Uh, Michael Wyatt, he's not on staff, and I don't know how regular he is. Dan Winkler is a regular fixture. He ought not to be. You can go to ptperror.com and see why. But as I go through that list and I say, it's a fairly in-house event, and there's something unspokenly being communicated. If these guys are so good and sound and whatever, why are they not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Why is Phil Sanders not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Why is Bruce McClarty not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Why is David Shannon not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Why is Dale Jenkins not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Why is Jeff Jenkins not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Now, you might say Jeff Jenkins was on the Memphis School of Preaching lectures back, I think, in 2018, but we're going to make a point about that. If these guys are so solid, why are they not there? Historically, the Memphis School of Preaching has, you know, and I'm saying at times they deserved it. But historically, Memphis School of Preaching has marketed themselves as the toughest and the staunchest. So why are these guys not there? If they're so sound. Money. There are older folk still around, and they remember the Roy Hearn days. My teacher, Wesley Simons, was taught by Roy Hearn. So there, and Wesley will have a cow that I said old people and then him. There are these old people out there who remember the days of Roy Hearn, and they are not going to keep sending money to the school if they see a sunset sympathizer on the lectureship. Now, it, it doesn't matter that BJ just went over to the Freed Hardeman Lectures and he's on with both Jeff and Dale Jenkins. Just so long as the supporters don't see a sun, this is Jeff Jenkins preaching at the Sunset International Bible Institute in Lubbock, Texas. If you don't know what that is, you can read Unity by Curtis Cates. 
What a fellowship. And I brought another one with me that I haven't mentioned, and he's a character, and I don't know why he's been getting a pass. Y'all know David Hester from Faulkner? I talked to David Hester once on the phone. He was making a road trip, and he gave me a lot of time, and he talked about a lot of y'all. But David Hester wrote this book years ago called Among the Scholars, and he says in it everything that I'm saying. He says in it, Among the Scholars, everything they said in the 92 Collierville Lectures. And one of the things was that they're not going to work with Sunset. Well, how has that changed? They all just decided there's enough money to go around if we abandon our principles. Two-year preaching schools can stay two-year preaching schools, and they can stay in business and send students over to the colleges with their credits, and everybody just stays quiet and everything goes okay. But there's an agreement that some people aren't going to get to come to certain lectureships. And right now, Memphis is silently making an agreement statement with me about fellowship and the Bible on fellowship by not having these men. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I were to ask anybody right after Freed Hardman, I would say, why did you guys use uh, Jeff Jenkins on the Freed Hardman lectures after he has been uh, in fellowship with Sunset? Everybody at Freed Hardman said, oh, Jeff Jenkins is sound. Jeff Jenkins is so sound. He's so strong. He's doing a whole bunch for these uh, preacher therapy workshops. Well, why are y'all not having Jeff and Dale do their preacher therapy at Memphis if they're so sound and strong? Because they're really not sound and strong. They are big time sympathizers with Sunset. And so is Phil Sanders. So I'm going to also just make a point here. You watch this stuff on YouTube. You send your kids, I'm saying the young adults are going to make a decision to go to preaching school. Some young teenagers are going to get preached into preaching school. Phil Sanders is not even a good preacher. Boring, dry, Fake, get on there about, you know, just, ah, we need to follow the Lord. Look, you might not like that. Look, aren't you tired of bad preaching? Jerry Moffat's got a really good booklet that everybody ought to read, and it's called Stop, what is it? Non-boring preaching. That's it. Non-boring preaching. Thank you, Jerry Moffat. Phil Sanders needs to read one. And then he needs to read What a Fellowship. And then he needs to read his own article from back in, like, 1995, where he said, guilt by association and among the scholars and then global music book memphis supporters don't want sunset sympathizers because the supporters don't want it you know several years ago we learned the hard way you know my dad had an older friend and he found out that michael was in memphis and he found out that i was headed there and an older friend was saying to my dad he was saying johnny why are they going down there and the thought before we got there was they may not be teaching it publicly like they used to. And my dad's thought was, but surely on the inside, they're still teaching it like they used to. Well, when I got there, I was in a fight the whole time. And then I left after a year. I went to the Tri-City School of Preaching, and then we had some fights over there. You're not getting a biblical education over there anyway. There was so much they didn't teach us. I've said this already. We didn't get past like chapter... 16 of Genesis because Billy Bland went to China. We didn't get past Acts chapter 7 with Bobby Liddell. No excuse. We didn't get taught Chronicles out of the Kings. Ted Clark just didn't do it. You're not getting a Bible education. Everybody on staff too busy going left and right. But the supporters are there and they remember Roy Hearn. They remember Curtis Cates and they say, we don't want to see sunset over there. Why is David Shannon not on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? Why is Bruce McClarty not on? He is the uh, resident minister for the entire Freed Hardeman University, and you guys don't have him on the Memphis School of Preaching Lectures? And the real reason is Bruce McClarty, Jeff Jenkins, hop over here to David Shannon. They, in 2021, at Harding University, Harding University's 89th Annual Bible Lectureship, they shared the pulpit with four Pepperdine speakers, Phil Brookman, Jim McGuigan, Noel Whitlock, Dale Maynard. Curtis Cates is the Memphis School of Preaching. Curtis Cates is the Memphis School of Preaching. And you will find Pepperdine written all up in this book. They are silently agreeing while Terrence Brownlow Dindy is 
heartily, hearty amen to everything being said about Freed Hardeman, and that includes everything you said about Freed Hardeman. BJ needs to repent. The Memphis School of Preaching needs to repent. East Tennessee needs to repent. Bear Valley, Denny Petrello needs to repent. They're not going to do it at home. And you say, Caleb, I, okay, I see this, I get it. They're not going to do it on Memphis School of Preaching grounds. The question becomes, why do they do it everywhere else they go? Why do they, go to, why do they send their whole director to Freed Hardeman and compromise with Harding men, Pepperdine men? And what is Pepperdine? Pepperdine brings in instrumental music. Pepperdine brings in women preachers. And Abilene does it too. That's where Don McLaughlin's daughter was on the Bible faculty, and she's a woman preacher. And if you go to Oklahoma, Oklahoma Christian, you're going to be getting it just like Abilene, just like Pepperdine. My dad did the broadcast where acapella with Keith Lancaster. Oh, boy. Come to Oklahoma. The reason I say that is folk will just not read. You will not educate yourself, and it drives me up the wall because y'all talk about these sectarian folk who don't know anything, and so many of my brethren don't know anything. Do you know what the Crossroads Movement is? Do you know what the Boston Movement is? Do you know who Kip McKean and Chuck Lucas are? Huh? No, no. Keith Lancaster was very supportive of Crossroads Movement, Boston Movement, Kip McKean, and Chuck Lucas. And that, Ch uh, Keith Lancaster is a cappella, and they come into Oklahoma Christian like nothing's wrong. Let me just say it this way. Do y'all want women preachers? Lauren, Lauren come on up. This is our preaching intern who's about to... Yes. Look at that. Look at that. I grew up... Look at that. Look at that. What a sight. You keep messing around with Pepperdine, Patrick Mead, then you are going to get women preachers and you are going to get instrumental music in your worship. And right now, what I'm telling you is these men do nothing about Pepperdine. Bruce McClarty, does, he is a Pepperdine speaker. <laughs> Look it up. Jeff Jenkins does nothing about Pepperdine. David Shannon does nothing about Pepperdine. Phil Sanders is not doing anything about Pepperdine. And there he is again, Jeff Jenkins. He's not doing anything about it. What are we doing? Terrence Brownlow Dendy is saying, hearty amen. Freed needs to repent. Memphis needs to repent. Now, what are we doing here? Let's have our moment that we do. We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not, at the, not after the tradition which he has received of us. Look, it's just as plain as day, big as Dallas. Pepperdine, Oklahoma Christian, Abilene, Harding, they are responsible for pushing women preachers, instrumental music. Now, more is going to come with it, but y'all got to wake up on something. And we're making headway, okay? People calling in, asking for the book. We're going to mail it to them. We've got uh, Terrence Brownlow Dendy, director of the Texas School of Preaching. I agree with your position on Freed Hardeman. Everything you state concerning them deserves a hearty amen. All the best, brother, Terrence Brownlow Dendy. So what we have as we conclude this evening is the Memphis School of Preaching. You can check out their schedule. They have a silent agreement with me. They won't do it at home. They're not going to bring Pepperdine guys. They're not going to bring Harding guys onto their lectureship. You check out Dan Winkler on ptpera.com. You're going to see they need to do something with him. B.J. Clark, Terrence Brownlow Dendy says you need to repent. Steve Higginbotham, Southeast, East Tennessee, Terrence Brownlow Dendy says you need to repent. Denny Petrello, Bear Valley, Terrence Brownlow Dendy says you need to repent. Rick Brumbach, who is a Southwest guy down in Austin, but he's now climbed the ladder higher to, he is, I think, actually the whole president over College of Biblical Studies at Freed Hardman. Terrence Brownlow Dendy says, you need to repent. This isn't hard. I'm saying, like, we all see it. Everyone who watched this broadcast, they see it. Only the people who are, like, wanting to live under a rock and they don't want to see it, they're the only ones asking, like, how many shows have we done on this now? They're saying, I don't understand Pepperdine. <laughs> don't worry about it. You're going to be okay if you don't understand Pepperdine by now. 
And now let me say this as my concluding moment. The nature of politics, if you read the, bi the biographies, you will learn the politics. Jimmy Allen's autobiography, Fire in My Bones, he had a lot of trouble with George Benson. You read uh, the biography of George Benson, and you're going to see he had a lot of problems with a lot of people, and sometimes James Bales. You read Tom Albright's, who worked with George Benson and James Bales, his autobiography, and what you start seeing are the political games. David Hester, among the scholars, you're going to learn the politics. Let me tell you how politics works in the schools, okay? We went to a dinner, which I hated. Memphis always making us go to these dinners. Whatever. But we went to a dinner one night, and Bobby Liddell was the director at that time. But Curtis Cates was still around, and he had the title of Director Emeritus. And Curtis Cates got up, and he said something a little bit before we all started having the dinner, and somebody said, we're really glad uh, that Brother Cates, Director, of Emer Director Emeritus, could make it out tonight. Thank you for being here. And then Bobby Liddell got up behind him, the director of the Memphis School of Preaching, and he told everybody, he said, let me go over, let's get a minute. He said, go home, get your dictionary out, and look up the word emeritus. It means he's still in charge. Now that's what Bobby Liddell said about the Memphis School of Preaching. You can swap titles all you want, but there's someone who really is in charge. And while Curtis Cates was around, he was in charge. As I said a moment ago, Curtis Cates is the Memphis School of Preaching. And Bobby Liddell says, go home, look up Emeritus, and you'll find out that that word means Curtis Cates is still in charge. I know the nature of politics. And you can disagree with me on this point, but I am about to make an appeal for Terrence Brownlow Dendy. Terrence Brownlow Dendy has come out and he has made a very big statement. I agree with your position on Freed Hardman. Everything you state concerning them deserves a hearty amen. All the best, brother. Terrence Brownlow Dendy. TBD says BJ needs to repent. Higginbotham needs to repent. Denny Petrella needs to repent. Rick Brumback needs to repent. Now, here's I know how politics works. The Texas School of Preaching is under the oversight of the eldership of the Bryan College Station congregation. Jason is an elder. Jason Rollo is an elder at BCS. And Jason Rollo is the co-director of the school. And Jason Rollo is everybody's boss at Rollo Insurance. If you want to take out number three, take out number three. Don't look at it. But points number one and two, they stand. Jason Rollo has two titles. Terrence Brownlow Dendy has one. Terrence Brownlow, Brownlow Dendy might be the director of the school, but who's over the director of the school? The BCS eldership. And who's that? The co-director. Oh, the co-director is really the director. But the nature of politics is that you really put up a fall guy that when he makes statements like this that might possibly hurt the 7th Annual Men's Development Day, that's why you put someone in the driver's seat who's really not in the driver's seat. You see, you're making an appeal for Terrence Brownlow Dendy? Here's my appeal. Don't y'all go firing Terrence Brownlow Dendy because he said what's right. The director is under the elders, and the co-director is the elder. And the direct co-director who's an elder likes to go to polishing the pulpit, where Memphis is very parading. And so is Freed Hardeman. This is a political web, and I say don't put your young men in it. Elders need to start teaching the young men at home. The evangelists need to start doing evangelism. Stop being a hireling pulpiteer. Do the evangelistic work. Let the elders do their work. Train the young men at home. Stop sending them into the political system that's going to chew them up, spit them out, and spank them when they start actually doing what the school kind of taught them to do. You go into Memphis School of Preaching, they got 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4 on there. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering doctrine. Yeah, well, you only get to reprove and rebuke who we say so. If they're a friend of MSOP, you don't get to reprove and rebuke. Don't put your kids. And look, you say they're not kids. They're grown men. If you're a grown man, 
you need to get ready to play the political game. And you better be good at it, because they will leave you behind. They'll kick you off the ladder. That doesn't matter. You can still do the Lord's work without any type of worthless certificate that you get at a school of preaching. Do not go firing Terrence Brownlow Dendy because he said what's right. Thank you for the encouraging word. Thank you for being a part of the broadcast tonight. Thank you be, for being concerned about spiritual matters. Thank you for even hearing a bit of what your conscience might be saying to you. Don't shut your mouth. Thank you for hearing your conscience. I love you. God loves you. Keep asking what does the Bible say. Have a good night. God bless you.